So we have the Model 3 hooked up to this 1,700 pound trailer. That is not my Model 3, so I'm totally fine doing whatever. So Teslas are some of the coolest cars on the planet, but allowing a car to accomplish more things is always a good thing. Today we're going to install a hitch on the Tesla Model 3 that allow it to tow, carry bikes, and just be an all-around more productive vehicle. Let's get started. So this isn't my Model 3, obviously. It took me a second to find someone brave enough to let me tear down their vehicle. Whoa, whoa, whoa. hey, wait a minute. So tear down? <laughs> this is Ben from Teslanomics. He has a whole channel dedicated to the economics of Tesla vehicles. Why do you want a hitch on your car? Well, I think that these cars are beautiful, but they're not as functional as they could be. So adding this hitch is going to give me a whole new capability of, you know, carrying bikes around and little things like that. And while the Teslas aren't rated to tow anything yet, we did see a performance model that was pulling something recently. So I thought this was just a great way to basically get that same functionality without having to buy an $80,000 car. That's true. And the thing that I like about this hitch is that it does nothing to change the aesthetics of the vehicle. You can't see it's there when it's installed. It's totally hidden, 100%. Let's go around to the back of the car and we'll show you how to install it. All right, so we have to get this hunk of metal behind the bumper inside of this Tesla. So we're gonna tear off the whole back end to get it installed, but it's not as hard as it sounds. This is called the Eco Hitch. I'll have it linked down in the video description. This video is not sponsored, but this thing has a towing capacity of 2,000 pounds and a tongue weight of 200 pounds. Now, obviously, like we mentioned before, the Tesla is not actually rated to tow stuff, but at the same time, Teslas are super powerful vehicles with electric motors and you know large batteries inside. So it's not like it's gonna hurt the car to throw a couple bikes on the back or to tow a trailer every now and then. It's Probably not the best idea to put like a mobile home behind this thing, but you know, 2,000 pounds is 2,000 pounds. We'll test it out here at the end. You nervous yet? All right, for this little plastic piece over top of the light, this little guy is kind of hard to unscrew and we don't want to scratch it up because this, uh, the Tesla is kind of nice. So we're going to take these pliers, put a cloth over it and then grab it and then twist it like that because the pliers are stronger than your hands are. And then once it's started, it'll come off the rest of the way. Keep going. All right, so there's two little black plastic pins on the inside um, that you just pop off this top and then the whole thing collapses inside, allowing you to pull the whole contraption out from underneath, allowing this felt piece to pull away, giving us access to the tail lights. And then to pull the tail light out, there's two bolts holding it in and both of these are eight millimeters. All right, after those two nuts are released from the bolts, the uh, whole thing comes away. There's two little pins, one here and one here. And with the way that they're shaped, they go inside these little plugs. So it's a little bit of force pops the whole light out of the housing. So the other, the passenger side tail lights the same way. It has those two little nuts inside. And then hopefully, yep, same two little clefts right here. So now the tail lights are out and uh, we can work on the bumper. So we've got these two push pins that hold this side of the bumper into the wheel well, and then just one torque screw that holds it all together. Okay, so we're underneath the Model 3 right now and there are, these are all 10 millimeter bolts. There's three over here on this end and we're moving this bottom plastic plate. And then there's two more clips right here on the very end, right next to the bumper. And these can be pulled down with just a screwdriver, popping out this plastic piece and you have full access to the bolts right there. So let's uh, pull off this plastic chunk. Remember throughout this whole process, it's probably a good idea to keep your screws organized, as with any project. There's two more bolts up here at the top of the bumper, underneath where those headlights used to be, and by headlights I mean tail lights. So the bumper itself is all made of plastic and it's got these little clasps right here. So I'm gonna unclip all of these. Oh! <laughs> this isn't my car. <laughs> And then all of the rear sensors on the bumper are attached to this little guy. And then uh, the whole thing comes out. Looks like Ben's been collecting rocks under here for a while. <laughs> Take this thing off-roading? Where have you, you been going, buddy? <laughs> I've just been jumping it, you know. And this is what a Tesla looks like without the uh, whole bumper or tail lights. How are you feeling about having your car not in one piece anymore, Ben? <laughs> Uh, I feel all right. I'm a little worried about the uh, Ikea nature of the assembly, but I know where to go if uh, we, we uh, lose any of these parts. Those plastic pushpins are impressive. <laughs> yes. You know, get some cinnamon rolls while you're there. It's cool. 
Okay, so all the plastic bumper stuff is off. There's this metal piece right here called the crash bar, and there's three bolts on either side. Three where Ben are at, and then three right here inside of these little holes. And each of them are 15 millimeters. And then the whole crash bar pulls up and away from the frame. So this is the hitch right here, and you see how it has this sloping plate? The car also has a sloping plate, so this piece of metal right here we actually take off and discard. We don't need it. But to access this metal, we have to remove this, and these are all 10 millimeter bolts, and there's five of them. One here, two, three, four, and five. You just gotta pull this clip off, and then you just set it inside. Dang, that's pretty brutal. So these are the same 15 millimeter bolts all the way around this. And once they're all off, we don't need this piece of metal anymore because the slope is included on the actual hitch itself. <laughs> all right, so if you remember that piece we just pulled off and discarded, there's these little plastic washers that are included with the kit and we're gonna put on each one of these little bolts and that's to keep the two metals separate from each other. And it could be for vibrations to minimize them, or it also could be because two dissimilar metals fusing together is a thing and we don't want that to happen. So the white washers go on these bolts as well as the three bolts right here on the mount itself. And that's where the crash bar installs once the hitch is on the Model 3. So now the hitch is installed on the back of the Model 3. This part right here is removable. I'll show you that in a second. And all of these nuts are tightened down to 50 pound feet of torque. So the thing with torquing down all of these bolts, the 50 foot pounds of torque, is with the torque wrench, once you hit the right amount of torque, it'll do this clicking thing right there. And that's when you know when to stop and the nut is tight enough on the bolt. And then the crash bar attaches right onto the hitch itself with the white washers between it and the hitch to prevent that corrosion. So the crash bar is also installed now and each of the nuts holding it in place are also torqued down to that same 50 foot pounds of torque that the uh, base hitch was torqued down to. This part right here is the hitch and the whole hitch is hidden except for this part right here which sticks up inside of the bumper and attaches to the hitch itself that we just mounted. But in order for that to happen we do have to cut the only cut that we're going to make a hole in the bottom of that plastic piece underneath the bumper itself. That way with the hole there this can slip inside of the hole and then this will protrude out but only when we actually want to tow something and when we're not actually towing something we can take it out and it's hidden and the Tesla 3 looks like it has no hitch so probably the scariest part of this ordeal is cutting into the bumper itself but it's actually a lot simpler than it seems we have the bumper off of the car set right here and to get the correct measurements we're measuring from the inside of the car to the outside where the bumper's at and right here measuring along this center line we're looking at 26 and a half inches which is this line right here and then in the instructions it says that if we put a dot right here which is three quarters of an inch from this one center line we can use a four inch hole saw and cut right there and then put another dot over here two and a quarter inches from that center line and use that same four inch hole saw right here. We don't have a four inch hole saw so we use this pink candle, set it right here, got the diameters correct and then we can use a jigsaw to cut that hole out and uh, it accomplishes the same thing. <laughs> And there we have it, perfectly cut for the hitch. <laughs> All right, so the bumper is in place. It's clipped in in both wheel wells. We have the little plastic tacks and both torque screws going up into the top connecting the bumper and the wheel wells. And Ben just finished installing all the bolts underneath that plastic skid plate. So we should be good to go after we install the brake lights. We'll go test out the trailer. All right, so we got the passenger side tail light installed. Remember it has that plastic bit up top. Then we got the driver's side tail light for the Model 3. Now it's in. And we'll plug it in and get those two nuts screwed in on the back side. And this is what it looks like with the hitch installed. Let's get that trailer on it. All right, so we have the Model 3 hooked up to this 1,700 pound trailer, which is pretty close to maxing out the towing capacity of the hitch we just installed, but we're gonna give it a try anyway. Like I said, it's not my Model 3, so I'm totally fine doing whatever. So I think the trailer did good. I was on the trailer. How did it feel from the inside? It felt good. It didn't have any kind of hesitation about pulling it. It felt strong. I was more worried about 
the trailer kind of bouncing around and stuff, but it felt solid. Obviously we weren't going super fast, it's just in a parking lot testing it out because we don't have like the lights and stuff on the back of it. Depends on what state you're in, you might need a wiring harness and brake lights and all that stuff. But for a bike rack and stuff, I think it'd be great. Yeah, for anything, any of your reasonable amount of needs that you would have for a vehicle like this, it performs well, so thumbs up. You might not use that hitch all the time, but sometimes it's useful to have on there. And when you don't need it, it's totally hidden. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comments section. Check out Ben's channel, I'll leave a link right here. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you around.